would love it if you would all stand and worship with us this morning.
song. The title of the song is called You Deserve It All. And it's just really talking about just giving God everything because he's given us everything. He's given us an opportunity at new life. He's given us an opportunity at new beginnings. And, and what else should we do but give God everything back because he's blessed us with so much. Uh, the words of this song are just beautiful. We encourage you to sing along as, as you feel comfortable. The song's called You Deserve It All.
for me who paid the price for each and every one of you he just asked you to come lay down your agendas who cares what the world thinks he wants your full attention he doesn't want the lukewarm Christian he wants us all in so maybe we're stuck in that spot right now. God, would you just help us for that person who's here? You would just speak to them. Help them to go all in. Lord, thank you that we can worship you freely in this building. Thank you that we can gather together with our brothers and sisters give you praise, lift up your name and your name only. Lord, we just thank you that you're in this place. Lord, would you just give our brother Terry the words to speak this morning? Use him as your vessel, that the words would come straight from heaven, from his mouth into our ears. Lord, that we would actually take what we hear today and then we would just use it to further our relationship with you. Jesus, we just have so many things to be grateful for. And Lord, like we sang, you deserve it all. Lord, we love you and we worship you and it's in Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, good morning, church. Happy Sunday. Go ahead, say hi to somebody.
All right. Well, good morning. If you could find a seat, we will continue on in worship this morning. Just want to welcome you to Church of the Good Shepherd. If you are a guest, thank you for being here and worshiping with us this morning. Uh, if you're watching online, thank you for tuning in. My name is Brad Keen. I am uh, the lead pastor, and I am doing announcements this morning. We've asked uh, one of our elders, uh, Terry Robinson, he's going to uh, share with us this morning. So looking forward to uh, the word he has. He always has props, and so there's a, there's a prop up here. So uh, looking forward to seeing, hopefully this alligator doesn't bite me, uh, see what he has for us. So all right, uh, a few things. Number one, life groups. We have life groups every Sunday morning at 9.30. We have a light breakfast, and it's just a great time to just go deeper in God's Word, and uh, right now we're covering Romans chapter 8. We've got a video series and discussion, so if you've never checked out Life Groups, uh, just encourage you to check those out. Those are Sunday morning at 9.30. Every Wednesday night, we have family night from 7 to 8, 10 p.m. Uh, it's been going great this year, and uh, just exciting to see what God is doing. So we got something for every age group, so uh, come on out, check that out on, uh, on Wednesday nights if you've not done that. Uh, Impact Fall Retreat is coming up. November is almost here. It's hard to believe. Uh, November is almost here, so we have Impact Fall Retreat uh, November 18th to the 19th. So uh, registrations for that are due, so you can register in uh, the Welcome Center. So please, uh, if you are going to go to that, parents, it's a great time for your kids. Uh, just to have a weekend to grow spiritually, so make sure that you get in your registration money and form for that. All right, because November is almost here, that means December is almost here, and December is Christmas. All right, who likes Christmas? You like Christmas? All right. Yeah, Christmas is a great time. Uh, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Uh, I always believe in giving God thanks and going through Thanksgiving first and, uh, and giving that time. At the same point, uh, we have to prepare and be ready for Christmas now. And so one of the things that we're preparing for uh, is our mixed media Christmas program. We've been doing this for, I don't know, six or seven years now. And so what we do is we have people within the church body, uh, plus our children's ministry gets involved. And uh, so if you have a gift, you have a talent, maybe it's poetry, maybe it's music, um, you know, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a skit, something that has to do with Christmas, um, we would like you to sign up. We'd like to get those registrations going. We just announced it last week for the first time. And uh, so make sure you start signing up today, if you would, please. We want to start to get that in order. And usually what happens is people wait to the last minute. And then like last year, we had to tell a few people that we didn't have room for them because then we had too many. So uh, now is a great time to sign up, register. Again, you can do that at the Welcome Center in the foyer. Um, and so we just want to start planning for that. It's always a uh, just a great time. The grandparents come and see the kids sing some songs, and then uh, we as a church body present our gifts really to each other but to God and uh, just glorify Him in the Christmas season. So that is Sunday, December 11th, and so that is... It's about five weeks away, so it's going to be here uh, before we, yeah, I just made y'all panic, didn't I? Uh, you know, it's going to be here before we know it, so Sunday, December 11th. All right, another thing we have here are voter guides. Uh, we had these a couple weeks ago, and we ran out uh, the first Sunday, so we ordered some more. Um, so Center for Christian Virtue puts these out. We, we ordered these from them, uh, made a donation to them. These are, again, in the Welcome Center. And these are great because they go through every uh, election that's happening here this fall. They got the Senate races. Um, they've got the House of Representatives. They've got different uh, Supreme Court justices, um, the different state candidates. Just everything is in this. And so um, they ask them questions way, where they stand, and they say they're, you know, give yes or no, or they don't answer at all. So if you want to know where candidates stand, if you want to know uh, just all the different, you know, sometimes you get to the you get to the voting and you're like, I didn't know we were voting on this person or this this position. I don't know what person to pick. And so uh, this is a great way to uh, have that information. So again, those are in the Welcome Center. Um, check those out. All right. With all of that being said, with Thanksgiving and Christmas and mixed media. Next Sunday is a big Sunday as well. Uh, put your clocks back an hour next Sunday or early to church you will be. So you can see, you can join us for life groups next Sunday. Everybody, we're going to have, we're going to better make extra copies of our, uh, of, of what we're doing for, uh, for life groups. So clocks go back an hour uh, next Sunday or Saturday night. So Everybody uh, 
gets an extra hour of sleep. Um, but I don't like how dark it is in the evening. So I'm going to go into a, a week of lamenting the time change here. And uh, when it's dark at 4.30 in the afternoon. But anyways, that is next weekend. So on Saturday night, make sure that you put your clocks back an hour. And if you don't, we will see you for life groups next Sunday. So it'll be a great time either way. All right, we're going to take up our offering at this time. You know, we give our tithes, we give our offerings to God. It is a chance for us to openly, willingly, freely give back to God what God has given us. God has given us life. He's given us the, the breath in our lungs. He's given us of our jobs. And so this is our opportunity to give back to God what he has given us. And so we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. There are four ways that you can do that. Um, there are baskets in the back where you can drop um, your, your tithes and offerings in each and every Sunday. Uh, the Church Center app, just go to your app store, download the Church Center app, and look for Church Good Shepherd in Wayne. That is a very, very easy thing to do. Just takes a minute or two to set up. Or you can text 84321, and you can set up online giving uh, that way. Or you can do it on our website. So really four easy ways uh, to be able to give and honor God in your life. And, you know, there's something powerful about money, isn't it? I mean, money, if you don't have money, you're in trouble. You know, you need money to pay rent or a mortgage. You need money to have food. You need money to, um, you know, have the electric and have the heat on and things like that. And uh, money can be a powerful thing. It can take hold of our life if we're not if we're not careful. And so when we give back to God and say, God, here, use use ten percent of what you have given me to further your kingdom on earth. It's a pretty powerful thing of just trusting God with your life and trusting God with your finances. And so that's what we do at this time. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you. And God, we're thankful that we can continue our worship now just in our, in our giving. God, that we would openly and willingly and freely uh, give back to you what you have so uh, graciously blessed us with. God, we're, we just ask that you would use uh, these finances to further your kingdom here in this region and around the earth. God, that um, just there's so many different ministries, there's so many different um, missionaries, people that we support, God, and we play just a, a small part in spreading the gospel, not only here, but around the world, uh, Lord, as these, these funds go to those areas. And so, God, we're so thankful for that. Uh, God, we just pray for your blessing upon it now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I'm going to ask uh, Terry Robinson to come up. I've asked him to share uh, this morning, and I know he's got a great message for us, and so uh, give him a warm welcome as him come. Make it feel like it's his first time here this morning. <laughs> well, it doesn't exactly feel like my first time here, but hey, before we get started... <clears throat> This morning, um, I had three different people ask me what prop I was using for my message today. And I said, well, believe it or not, I don't have one. So we were back in life groups this morning, and this one was sitting back there on a counter. And someone said, well, why don't you just take it up there anyway? <laughs> so there it is. It doesn't have a thing to do with what I'm going to talk about. But there it is, for those of you that like props, I'll set it up here, you can come up afterwards and take a look at it. I think it's an alligator, I'm not really sure. So anyway, this morning we're going to talk about a two-word phrase, shaken up. Shaken up. But before we do that, let's pray, because I don't want to get shaken up in the middle of this message. So, Father, we thank you for, for loving us so much, God. Thank you for this beautiful family of God we have right here, and uh, for blessing us, and thank you for our worship team that leads us so well every Sunday to worship you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts this morning as we, as we uh, talk about being shaken up, Lord. Just show us, each one of us in our own personal lives, what it is that you want us to leave this place thinking about. And we ask it in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Shaken up. Shaken up. How many of you... I'm going to borrow this because they were actually using it in children's ministry. 
You better get it back there then. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. I stole the children's ministry prop. Okay, where was I? Oh. Shaking up. Yeah, I'm a little shaken up now. How many of you watched a little bit of college football yesterday? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of them, yeah. I don't know if you noticed or not, but not just yesterday, but whenever there's a football game on, at least some point in the game, you'll hear the announcer or the sportscaster say, there's somebody shaken up on the field. This person got shaken up on the field. And what that means is that that person got hit hard, knocked down, and having trouble getting back up. Hit hard, knocked down, having trouble getting back up. They are shaken up. And you know, I was thinking about this, these two words, this message earlier in the week, and I was thinking, you know, th this isn't just for football players. This is for me. This is for all of us. Because we've all had times in our lives when we've been shaken up. Things have happened that we, we've been hit hard. We, we've been knocked down. It's been hard to get back up. And the truth is, we live in a shaken world. I mean, just look around. I mean, I don't watch much news. I, I try to not watch much news. It's, it's hard. But when I do, I realize that this world's a mess. And things are not right. And, and there's a lot to be shaken up about. So this morning, I want to talk about being shaken up. Um, you know, in our life, in the life we live right here, even in the United States, there's a lot of injustice. There's a lot of loss. Um, there's a lot of hurt, a lot of hurt feelings, a lot of brokenness, uh, a lot of broken hearts. There's broken finances. I, I mean, you know, how are you doing with inflation right now? I mean, ugh. Uh, there's lying and, and deceitfulness, and there's just all this stuff working, trying to work against us. Things that try to shake us up, and they do. These things happen. You know, we do, every now and then, we find ourselves being hit hard, knocked down, hard to get back up and get back in the groove again. Recently, we lost a, a good friend. We lost a good Christian brother in the Lord, a wonderful man, gentle, caring, generous. It was very sudden, very shocking, and we were shaken. We felt like we were hit hard. Knocked down. And you know, when I think about it, and I do, every now and then, I'm still having trouble getting up. And that's, that's the way it is when we grieve losing someone we love. Recently, you'll, in the news, you've seen uh, these stories about Florida and that horrific hurricane and what happened there. Lives were lost. People were injured. People lost their homes, their businesses, their jobs, their pets. So much destruction, and they're shaken. They've been hit hard. They've been knocked down. Many of them won't get up for a long time. There was a picture the other day. I saw a picture on the Internet of an older couple. When I say older, my age, older. And uh, they were, they were kind of leaning up against a fence, and... And they, they were sitting across the street from where their house used to be. And, yeah, I understand it's just a house, you know, and those things can be replaced. But still, it's important. It's important to you. If I was to lose my house right now, that would, I would be shaken up. And they were obviously shaken up. Just the look in their eyes, that look of being lost, that look of, what do I do now, you know? Shaken up, hit hard, knocked down, hard to get back up. How about the pandemic? That thing's still going on, you know? Thankfully, not to the extent that we 
knew a year or two ago, but, you know, there's something that shook everybody up. You know, businesses were closed, and we couldn't see each other, and it was just crazy, you know, and all these tests, and we were shaken up. As a nation, as a world, we were shaken up, and many people were hit hard and knocked down. Some people didn't get back up. It was a rough, rough situation to go through. So you might be thinking, wow, <laughs> this is a bummer of a message. <laughs> you know, when does he get to the good part? You know? Well, the truth is, in the midst of all of this, all these things that are going on, God is not shaken. God does not change. Jesus is still with us. The Holy Spirit is still ministering life in the midst of death, in the midst of loss, in the midst of frustration and disappointment and broken hearts. He's still there ministering to us because he loves us so very much. The, the problem is, for us, is we live in this world. We live in a world that's, well, it's, it's a sinful place. We're kind of stuck here until we get to go home to be with Jesus. And this place is the place that gives us loss and gives us destruction and and gives us sickness and gives us uncontrollable storms and, and pandemics. But God wants us to know this morning that he's bigger than all of that. And even though, even though sometimes we think, well, God, where are you? He's always with us. He's always there. He's always there to walk with us through it. You know, sometimes, you know, this is something, and in, in as old as I am, I'll never figure this, I don't think anybody ever figures this out, but, you know, I think, well, God, why don't you just do away with this stuff? You know, why don't you do away with these pandemics, and why don't you do away with all this stuff that makes us feel shaken up, you know? Well, you know, it's because we live here, and, and what he says is, I will be with you. I will take care of you. You just need to trust me. There's a verse um, I want to share with you that's not on, that won't be on the screen because I didn't give this one to, to Jeremy this, this week when they got the slides ready. But it's a verse that God reminded me of last night. You know, I had this all written and I thought it was all done. And, and last night I just felt like something's missing here. And uh, we were watching Heartland. We were just having a, you know, watching a great movie. And I, and I kept thinking like, I can't sit here and watch this because I'm, I'm unsettled. I was shaken, you know. I wasn't knocked down, but I was shaken about this. And it's in Psalm 46, and it says this, God is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength. And, you know, a refuge is a place of safety. It's a place where, where you can be held close and in, in, in this morning in, in Life Groups, we were talking about the verse that, where it talks about Abba, Father. And uh, the fact is that God is our loving Daddy. He's our loving Father. And, you know, a good loving Father is able to hug his children and hold them close when they're going through a difficult time. And this says God is our refuge. He's the one that will hold us close when we are shaken, when we've been hit hard, when we've been knocked down, when we're struggling to get going again. He's the one that will hold us and comfort us. And that says he's also our strength. He gives us the strength so that we can get up and move on. There's a great song, and I, and I just happen to think about this. Danny Gokey has a great song, and it's talking about letting your heart beat again. Many of you have heard that song on Christian radio. And it's such a, it's such a song of ministry to anyone who's going through a hard time because sometimes when we're shaken and knocked down, we feel like it's all over. You know, what's the point? You know, I'm just going to give it all up. And God said, no, 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 that's not, that's not it. Let your heart beat again. You know, let me be your strength as you're going through this difficult time, going through this challenge. You know, he, he wants us to know, yes, we're in a bad place. We're living in a in a sinful world, but we are not of this world. You know, we have the promise of being heirs with Christ Jesus so that one day, if you believe in Jesus Christ to be 
your Savior, to be the one who paid the price for your sins, one day when we leave this place, we will spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. And that's what we have to look forward to. And while we're here, he has stuff for us to be doing. And yeah, we're going to get knocked down. I've been knocked down a few times. You have too. You know, this isn't, this isn't new to our generation. If you read any history at all, you'll see that time and time again, people have gone through tough times. I mean, read the Old Testament. Look at what God's people went through in the Old Testament. You know, hard times, knocked down, hard to get back going again. It's, some things never change. And we just need to remember that God never changes. And he's always there for us. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. He's always there. Anybody ever get in trouble? Come on, be honest. You've been in trouble? Yeah, and I'm, not, I'm not just talking about when you were kids either. Sometimes we older guys get in trouble too. Yeah. Well, this is a promise. He's an ever-present help in trouble. And so when we get in trouble and something happens and we get knocked down, you know, our first, our first thought, our hope should be in him. He's the only... Did you know that we can't fix ourselves? You know, I... I think the quicker, the sooner we come to that realization that we can't fix everything that goes wrong in our life, the sooner it is we begin to trust, to really trust in the one who can. He's the one who wants to give us strength and healing and encouragement in our life so that we can keep on keeping on. The rest of that verse, or the next part of the verse says, therefore, we will not fear. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. And then... And then another, in another verse, Jesus said, I will be with you always. I will be with you always. He's always with me. He's always with me. Sometimes I forget that. And, you know, I, it's, it's like, yeah, he's, he's with me right now. He's with me when I'm out in the yard working. He's with me when um, I go to the grocery store. He's always with me. And, and he wants us to remember that as an encouragement, that he's there. Someone we can talk to in, in the middle of, of a crisis, of a time of being shaken. You know, back in the summer, we did Bible school. And uh, uh, Terry Gonyer and uh, my brother Pete Bruff and I, we were asked to share the message, share a message with the kids in Bible school. And we did. And we had a great time working with the kids but the one message that I keep remembering was when we told them about calling out to Jesus. You know, you're in trouble, call out to Jesus. And you know what? That's not just for little kids. That's for old people like me, older people. I'm sorry. Older people like me, you know. I don't consider myself old, just older. Anyhow, no, seriously, crying out to Jesus. I remember uh, We've, I've had two accidents out on 199. You know that old thing about they say you always have an accident within a mile of where you live? It's true. Twice within a mile of where I live. But I remember going south on 199 in one of our vans that no longer exists, and a lady turned in front of me onto Jerry City Road, and I remember hitting the brakes and saying, Oh, Jesus, at the same time, you know, Lord, help me. I don't know. I can't get stopped here. It was obvious, it was going, obvious I was going to hit the car, other car, and I did. And thankfully, nobody got hurt except my van, which was totaled. But no, the, what I'm trying to say here is that he's always with us. He's always with us. It's almost like we need, sometimes we need this, this headgear. Remember headgear? We were talking about this the other day. Headgear for people with braces. What happened to that? They quit using that. Anyhow, sometimes we need a headgear that goes around our head, and it holds this little placard in front of us that says, Jesus is with you. So no matter where you go, no matter what's going on, it's a constant reminder that he's with you. Even though the Holy Spirit's trying to remind us, sometimes we need a little, we need another sign. I have a few verses I want to share with you this morning about being shaken. And, um, and how God is there to help us through those times. 
And again, I think, I believe, I honestly believe there are times when God has prevented us from being in a place of being shaken. He's protected us in places of being shaken. But I believe there's sometimes he's allowed us to go through times of being shaken for a reason. Because it's helped to build things on the inside of us that are useful to him in our testimony to others around us. So the first verse I want to share today is from Isaiah 54.10, if you have your Bible uh, or your phone app, Isaiah 54.10, otherwise it will be on the screen behind me. It says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. Think for a moment, what if you were out in Colorado and you were just really enjoying the Rocky Mountains and their beauty and they're just so huge And all of a sudden, they started shaking. And the foothills in front of you started sinking. And everything's shaking. I mean, would that be a little frightful? Yeah, that'd be like, what is going on here? You know, everything's falling apart. And it says here, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my failing love for you will not be shaken. So what God's saying is, and you know, this probably isn't going to happen. You know, you're probably never going to see a mountain fall into the sea. I'm not saying it won't happen, but probably not. But what does happen in our lives is things happen that are just as scary. They're just as frightening to us. Things are falling apart in your life about something. could be anything. And God says, hey, settle down. You know, I'm still here. And my love for you will not be shaken. There's nothing that can happen in your life that's going to shake God out of your life. He's always there to take care of us. He says, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. You know, I raised, Judy and I raised six children. Love them all. Great kids. They're all adults now. And, um... They made mistakes. You know, they messed up. They did dumb stuff just the same way I did dumb stuff when I was a kid. I still do dumb stuff. Anyway, um, that's another sermon. But we loved our children. We always had compassion on on them for whatever they were going through. And if we as humans can do that, think about the compassion that God has for us. He loves us more than we love each other. He, must, he loves us more than we love ourselves. It says here he has compassion on us as we go through times of being shaken. Psalm 16, 5 to 8. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. Now, he's not talking about a lot where you build your house. He could be, you know, he could be saying, oh, your lot's secure. But that's not what this is really about. When they use the word lot here, they're talking about the lot that you've been given. You've been given a lot, A-L-O-T. Okay, we all have a lot. And what God is saying here is that your a lot is secure in him. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. Did you know that? Did you know that God instructs your heart while you're sleeping. Isn't that amazing? He's telling us things while we're sleeping. He's talking to our spirit. Your body's asleep, but your spirit is awake and communicating with God while you sleep. He's putting things into you to use the next day when you you are awake. Um, Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. When I read that verse, with him at my right hand, I was reminded of something that happened to me when I was a third grader. And some of you will remember this because I've shared it before, but I'm going to share it again because I like telling the story. And it's a story about my friend, Gilbert. Gilbert came into my life when I was about 9 or 10 years old. I lived about a mile and a half from where I went to school, and I walked the same route every day. I was supposed to. 
I was instructed to by my parents, walk the same route every day. Must have been some security issue. I don't know. It didn't help a bit, though, that there were two bullies that lived on the route that I took to school. And I was kind of a wimp. You know, I wasn't big and strong like I am now. (laughs) But I was kind of a wimp. And these guys picked on me. Not every day, but, you know, once or twice a week I would get picked on by one or the other Because they lived on the street, and I had to go right by their house, and there I was. Well, anyway, about two months into the school year, a new family moved in across the street from us, the Scepter family. And they had a boy, and his name was Gilbert, Gilbert Scepter. Gilbert was my age. Gilbert was a head and a half taller than anybody else in our class. And Gilbert's mom came over to my mom when they moved in. She said, would it be okay if Gilbert walked to school with Terry? (laughs) Would it be okay? Wow. Come on now. You know? And, well, of course, Mom said, well, sure, why not? You know? What a deal. Nobody picked on me again. This guy was big, but he was kind, and he was sweet, generous, and he was a blessing to be around, just a neat guy. And so when I'm reading this verse, it says, with him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. I know it's talking about God. It's talking about Jesus. I was reminded of Gilbert, and I'm not so sure that Jesus didn't send Gilbert to save me from being picked on so much. So maybe, just maybe, you know, in our lives, there are things that could happen that God prevents from happening by sending you a Gilbert in your life because he loves you. It's part of his grace and mercy for it on us. Psalm 55, 22. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Anytime I do a Bible study or a, a, you know life groups or Wednesday night or whatever and we have the word righteous, I always have to ask, do you know what righteous means? Because so many people have this idea that a righteous person is just a perfect person. You know, he is so righteous. And that's not what it means at all. Righteous means in right standing, in a right place, in a right relationship. So if you think about it, what it's saying here is, he will never let anyone in a right relationship be shaken. And what that really means is be shaken beyond help. You know, because even those of us who are in right relationship, we get shaken, we get hit hard, we get knocked down, but we get back up because we have somebody stronger than us living on the inside to encourage us and to build us up and to help us to get back where we're supposed to be. Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2 and 5 to 8. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. When I was about 12, uh, my, my main, no, I, wasn't, I wasn't that old because my youngest brother wasn't born yet, and he's 10 years younger. So I was, must have been about eight. Uh, our family went to Savannah, Georgia. We went down to visit my aunt and uncle. My uncle was in the Army in Savannah, And in Savannah, Georgia, there is this fort. Anybody ever been to Savannah, Georgia? Yes. Fort Pulaski? Did you go there? Yeah. Wonderful place if you like forts. And the thing I remember about it, it was so huge, and the walls were thick, and they had cannons, and it was fortified. I mean, it it was a place of being protected. It was a place of safety. It was a fortress. He is my rock and my, fa- my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. I'll never be shaken beyond it. You know, when, when, uh, when battle came about and, you know, hey, we also have Fort Miggs right up the road here, another fortress, a little different, skinnier walls. Anyway, but when battles came, happened, you know, they, people went into the fortress. They went there for... Safety. It was a place of safety. It was a place of protection. 
And God's telling us this morning that when you're feeling shaken up, when you've been hit hard, knocked down, and you have trouble getting up, he is your fortress. Go to him. Get in with him, you know. Go someplace where you can be quiet and listen to what he has to say to you, where he can give you words of encouragement and blessing in your life. That's how much he loves you. Verses 5 through 8 said, Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Ooh, hope. Hmm. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. Look at that. He said that twice in four verses. He is my, that must be important. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. There's refuge again. Trust in him at all times. You people pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. There it is, twice in two verses. Our refuge, a safe place. But what what I want to call your attention to is where it says, pour out your hearts to him. Sometime in the near future, you're probably going to be shaken about something. It's inevitable. You know, it's just, you know, it's not, it may not have anything to do with what you've done or, it's just, we just live here, you know. And when it happens, pour out your hearts to him. You know, complaining and grumbling. I'm still learning this one. Complaining and grumbling doesn't change anything. You know, I'm still learning that I can't fix myself. I can't fix the situations in my life by myself. I need to pour out my heart to him and say, Lord, this is happening and I don't know what to do. I need your help. And according to his word, he will help. Psalm 34 17 to 19. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. Oh, wow. He said that. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. The person who's in right standing, you know, this doesn't seem fair or just, but it is. It says here that even those of us who are in right standing with God will face many troubles. It's like, man, shouldn't we get out a a trouble-free card or something, you know, I mean, because we belong to God? Well, we will once we leave here, you know. I mean, I think, I was thinking about my dad the other day, and he's been gone now, I don't know, 10, 11 years now. And uh, he loved Jesus, and... and, uh, Anyway, I was just thinking about, my dad was ornery, and he was, always in, he was always in trouble, one way or the other. But no more, no more, you know, he's, with, he's in heaven with Jesus and enjoying, enjoying his eternal life. And that's where, that's where we need, that's what we need to think about, you know. We need to think about the end game here and not just what we're going through right now. And if you look at all those, can I see that? Can we have that verse back up again from Psalm 34 on the screen? Yeah, look at those things that are listed there. Troubles, brokenhearted, spirits crushed, facing many troubles. You know, those things, those are real deal situations. Those things happen to us. And uh, you ever had your spirit crushed? You know, an extreme disappointment? Things didn't go the way you thought they should. Somebody walked out on you. They cheated you. You got fired from a job and you didn't do anything. You know, those kinds of things tend to crush our spirit. And God said, don't let those things crush your spirit. Come back to me. Let me help you through this. You know, when you're hit hard and knocked down, you've got to get up again. And the only way you can do it is with his help. You can't do it on your own. Luke 6, 46. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man. Yeah, they even put down on there. That's good. A man or a woman (laughs) building a house. I'll tell you about what that means here in a minute. 
They're like a man or a woman building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck the house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man or woman who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Building a house on a strong foundation. When I read that verse earlier this week, I was thinking about my neighbor across the road. And if you ever go to my house, look at the house right across the road from me. It's a beautiful ranch house. And the lady that lives there is my age, in her 70s. And she built that house about hmm, 15 years ago, maybe. I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. She was probably in her 60s. She built the house. She dug the footers. Now, somebody came in and poured the cement for her. She laid the sill plates. She built walls. She built a house. She's a true value woman, you know. She, you, you know, you, I mean, wow, what a woman, you know, a great person. Anyhow, um, I think the only thing she had help with was uh, pouring the cement and doing the, doing the trusses. I think that's it. And she and her, she has a, a guy friend, uh, they, and I think maybe her boys might have helped her put the sheeting down on the roof. But this woman built a house. Now, what's I have to do with this lesson? Nothing. Just I wanted to put that in there. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so, I'm just so amazed by, I'm just so amazed. And you know, most of us, when we get to be in our 60s, we think, yeah, you know, we're not going to do that anymore. And here's a woman that built a house in her 60s. You know, and uh, and I hope she's listening today. I don't know if she listens or not, but I hope she is. And I just want to say to you, we're proud of you. You, you are an amazing example to others around you. Um, but the main th- thrust of what this is about is we need to make sure that we built our, the foundation of our lives on the rock, on the rock Jesus Christ. And it says that when we do, that our, that, you know, it, it helps to prevent a lot of the shaken. You know, a lot of times people who don't have their life built on the rock, on Jesus, go through some things that we don't, and, it, and it's horrible. And yeah, we, we go, you know, I'm, have you ever thought, you know, if I had to go through this without Jesus, I don't know how I would do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, I don't know how people do it. How do you do it? You know, he's the strength in my life. You know, he's the one who keeps me going. Two more verses. I got eight minutes yet. (laughs) (laughs) Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, including the ones where you've been hit hard, knocked down, and having trouble getting up, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus. You know, God's really big on hearts. That's where he works. Well, he works in the whole, our whole being, but it's our heart that he's really most interested in, and it's, and, and, and it's our heart is where everything comes from that's really us. I mean, you're, you're seeing me. You see me on the street. You say, oh, yeah, that's Terry Robinson, you know, because this is what I live in. But, but I'm in here. I'm in here somewhere. You know, that's the real me. It's in my heart. It's me. Okay, and, and in this verse, it's telling us that when times get tough in every situation, and especially when you've been hit hard and knocked down, it says, don't, be, don't worry, don't, get, don't panic, don't be anxious about it, but by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, talk to God about it. Bring it to him first. You know, I remember uh, listening to a preacher one time talking about um, accidents, you know, when somebody has an accident, he says, yes, call 911, but at the same time you're dialing 911, be talking to God about it. You know, talk to him because he is the ultimate first responder in our life. If we let him, he's the ultimate 
first responder. I like that. He's the ultimate first responder in our life if we let him do that. Last verse. <laughs> Judy and I watch this show. It's a, uh, <clears throat> what's the show called? <laughs> it's about building, it's about taking down old log cabins. Barnwood Builders. Anybody watch Barnwood Builders? Oh, yeah, we got some Barnwood build, Builder people here. And there's a guy on the Barnwood Builders, and when they're, when they're putting these things together, they, they take down these old cabins, and they redo it, and then they take them somewhere else, and they rebuild them. And when they get to the last log, he goes, last log. So now, at our house, every time we say last anything, it's like, ah, ha, ha, it's Barnwood Builders. In this case, it's last verse, but anyway, I don't know. John 14, 26, 27, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. By the way, Jesus said this. He will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I mean, it's like we have... It's like we have this recorder on the inside of us, that's, and it's recording. It's we're remembering what God has said to us, and the Holy Spirit just keeps reminding us. Hey, do you remember when God said this to you? Or do you remember when you read in your Bible this verse? You know, it's like it's, it works on our, on our behalf. It says, uh, we'll teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Key words right here are do not let. Do not let. I've shared this before. I'll share it quickly. When I was in medic training back in 1968, before I went overseas, they taught us all kinds of stuff on how to keep someone alive until we, we could get them on a chopper and get them where they needed to go. But the one thing, one of the things I remember that was extremely important that one of the instructors said to us was, do not panic. Do not let your emotions cause you to panic. Stay cool as much as you can. And it's true of everything in our life. It doesn't matter what's going on. Whatever it is that hits you hard and knocks you down and tries to keep you from getting back up, don't panic. Just take a moment. Take a deep breath if you have time and say, Lord, I need help. I need your help here. He knows that. He just wants you to say it. He wants you to acknowledge that you need his help. There's something about that. There's something about that connection, you know. As a dad, I kind of I get it because I'm thinking, well, I can remember a few times with my boys and daughters, you know, when something was going on and there was a connection. You know, they said something that made me think, ah, they got it. You know, they finally get it, you know. And maybe that's the way it is with God. He's, oh, you know. And I cry out to him and I say, hey, I need help in this situation. God is saying, he gets it. I'm here to help him. He can't fix himself. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you that you love us so much that even when we feel shaken up, even when we've been hit hard and knocked down and we're laying on the ground and we can't get up, we know that you're with us. We know that by your spirit, you've, you'll give us what we need to keep on keeping on. Uh, I'm reminded, Lord, that your word says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so we thank you for that, Lord. And I pray that uh, for each one of us here, for each person who's online listening, Lord, that as those times of come into our lives where, where we're shaken, that we, we would remember, Lord, that you love us and you care for us and you're compassionate and you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.
Thank you for that word. Was that good? Amen? So he always has a way of telling stories. So it's always good to, to hear most of the stories he tells. All right. Uh, amen. Well, uh, just appreciate you being here this morning. Don't forget we have voter guides uh, out in the Welcome Center. Uh, please check those out and take them home. And, uh, you know, I encourage you, get out and vote. Uh, it's your civic duty to do that. Don't let this uh, election or any of them pass you by. Uh, get out and vote. And as always, you know, we apply God's word to our life, right? We don't apply our life to God's word. We apply God's word to our life. And so just encourage you, you know, take a look at the candidates, see where they land, see how their lives and, and uh, their decisions apply to God's word and pray about it and see who God would have you vote for. So just want to encourage you in that. Also, make sure if you're thinking about uh, being part of the Mixed Media Christmas Program, make sure you start signing up today. Uh, we'd love to get some people doing that so we can start kind of taking a look at what that is going to look like uh, this year. All right, God bless you. Go in peace and have a great week.